Hi guys, welcome to the channel Practical Reefer. My name's Mark. Um, long overdue update. I've had a busy few weekends. There's one weekend in June where Friday's a good friend's birthday, um, Saturday's my best friend and my nephew's birthday, and then the Sunday was my dad's birthday, my other friend's three-year-old's birthday, and it was Father's Day. So that weekend was just totally wiped out. Kept on top of the tank and things, but not as much time to, to make videos and, and give updates. I did film some bits and pieces that are going to be in this video later over the last few weeks, which I'll be adding in. Um, and then last weekend there, I did Ben Nevis on the Saturday, and then I was spent about four or five hours driving on the Sunday coming home through a sort of tourist route, um, seeing like Glencoe and things like that. So didn't have time that weekend either. That was a, a busy old weekend. So um, kept on top of the tank though, just been doing the same weekly maintenance and things like that. Um, as you can see, just in the last couple of days, I've got rid of the rather hefty 18mm ply hood that I had on. Now, it did the job, it was really good. Um, I was able to hang different bits of kit from it, it gave me a little bit of flexibility of just to take the you know the drill out and a few screws. And um, However, it wasn't that pretty looking, so I bought off of um, AliExpress a, it's just a, there's a few plastic brackets that sit on the side of the tank here. Um, there's one either side, three metal poles, I'll show you the whole thing in a, in a minute. It sits probably about twice the height of where the light actually sits. Um, so there's a good bit of play with the, the height of the light. I've got about halfway, so that does the job. Um, it's a bit neater looking as well. It's easier to feed because with the hood, I had to take the front off to feed them and to do anything, I had to take the hood off. Um, and without doing that now, I've got the height line hanging there um, and I can adjust the lights and things and you know um, change the, the hanging back filters or you know dial them down if I need to and, and top up the ATO without having to remove the front of the hood. So. Um, did the job, it was a, a kind of very much a budget object, it was just something that I, I built myself um, to do the job and then uh, I was waiting for this to come as well, it was, it was about, I think it was 30 quid on AliExpress but again you can hang your lights from shelves above or the directory, directly from the ceiling, that's another option which is why the hood was kind of a personal choice thing so um, I've got the hood in the cupboard there, I'm pretty sure I could use it as a step ladder because it's, it's pretty sturdy, it was heavy. 18mm uh, ply was maybe quite a, a thick way to go but it does the job and what I did say in my, my previous video you can't quite see it there I'm using the Fleas on 165 watt black box light now I've got the longer version it's just it, it's just shy of two feet that's maybe maybe got an inch either end um, it's, it's about 20 22 inches long um, so the normal ones are a little bit shorter but a bit wider so this one is actually pretty much the full length of the tank but it's perfect does the job um, and what it does allow me to do, it allows me to control whites and blues so you know if I want to play about with them I can uh, do that and I can have the, but I basically have the whites on just as low as they can be and I have the blues on about 50% and that seems to be fine for the softies at the moment so we'll play about with that light as we go and it's something new. I've got the PAR 38 just sitting over a little frag tank which I'm setting up, basically there's I've just got copepods and some live rock in it just now, there's nothing going on in there. Um, so that's fine and so better access there and looks a bit cleaner as well and the, the, the hood was quite chunky so um, I did try a couple of weeks ago um, I was starting to, to dose vibrant basically I just wanted to just clean up the rock that little bit I just wanted that slightly nicer look um, but me having no nitrates or phosphates um, it wasn't a great idea and I've started to get the beginnings of cyano um, or I say the beginnings I'm getting cyano um, which is something that's over the tank. So I'm kind of dealing with that. I'm just kind of keeping up with maintenance, um, trying to get the flow up a little bit. Um, and it's kind of it's in the you can actually see the um, the sand's got it underneath and stuff. When I've been vacuuming it, it's almost just been turning over. So it is in there. So it's something I'm going to have to battle with a little bit. It's, but it's about getting that the nutrients up again. Um, so that's something I'll work on over the next next month or so. What I have been doing um, to try and sort my nitrates and phosphates is increase my feeding. So I've been feeding pellet in the morning, um, which they all eat, and then I've also been feeding one cube of frozen food every day, near enough. Um, so I've got different ones, I've got like Mysis, I've got Copepods, I've got like Marine Feast I think it is, it's all the Gamma TMC packs, um, or TMC Gamma packs, um, there's Krill is one of them, Bloodworms the other, so I've got like five different ones, I feed a different one every day, I just rotate through. Um, and I'm not removing any of the waste or anything like that and I've still got low nitrates and low phosphates and what I did notice the weekend I was away um, at Fort William 
I didn't feed them for 48 hours and the mushrooms, you could actually see the, they were sort of like the, I can't remember what they're called, but it's like they're spilling their guts out when they're not, you know, when they're not doing well. Now after a few days of feeding again, sort of just back on normal feeding, the mushrooms look much, much better and they are, they've been looking better over the last couple of weeks. But on that weekend, I was away for 48 hours, obviously stripped out the nutrients. The fish were totally fine, they're fed for two days. Um, without feeding, you know, they got a good feed on the Friday and then they were fed on the Sunday evening, so it was 48 hours, it wasn't the sort of full two days. You know, they were fed as normal on the Friday and then, so it was all day Saturday, Sunday morning, it was a bit different. Um, so the best part of 48 hours. So, but that's, I did notice the mushrooms weren't too happy with having, you know, that nutrients obviously dropped down again. Um, but back onto to normal feeding, got them, got them where they needed to be. So I'll maybe try Vibrant again in a few months once I've got things a bit more stable and I just want to just clean up the, the, the rock work a little bit. And what I did do while I was booting in the Vibrant is I removed all my macroalgae and threw them into this tank. And my red grape macroalgae took an absolute savage in. All, all the grapes have come off of it um, and it's not very happy, but it'll grow back, I'm sure. Um, and the other two are not too bad, to be fair, either. Um, so once I've sorted out my low nutrients, I'll maybe try Vibrant again and we'll do a video on that. But for me this time, totally didn't work. It did, um, the glass did not um, get any diatoms on it anywhere near as quickly as it did. So Vibrant did make a difference there. You, you've seen it slow down that, that process of algae building up on the, the glass. But in terms of the rock work, it, it didn't do anything for me. And it's uh, basically started cyano. So, um, but that's, I wouldn't say that's Vibrant's fault. That's probably where my tank's been at the time. It wasn't a good time to put Vibrant in. Um, so yeah, I've up to feeding. I'm trying to get those nutrients. I also added two fish. Um, so that was to obviously, again, I was planning on those fish anyway, but part of adding those fish was to, to get the nutrients up. So the, what I did add, there was a, a new Hector's Gobi, um, which we'll come to in a minute, and I'll show you a little video on that. Um, which is not great, unfortunately the, the, the goby's not in the tank anymore. Um, and I also added a yellow banded possum wrasse, so probably not your go-to, like it's not your A team for removing pests, but it is a wrasse that will do that. I still have my micro brittle stars, which was the one thing I was worried about with adding a wrasse, that I would lose those, because I really like that sort of, that little cleanup crew, and I'm in two minds still about adding bristle worms, because I actually quite like them, and I think they're quite beneficial. But it's a decision I can't ever undo, so I probably will add them at some point. Um, so yeah, they're in. The, the possum rash is doing great. I've had him a couple of weeks now. Um, I'll show you a little clip just now. Um, basically, I, I added the, the Hector's Gobi on a Sunday. And come the, I think it was the Friday, um, so the best part of a week later, um, I found him dead in the morning and he was kind of onto the side of the power head. Um, it wasn't in the power head, but he'd been sucked towards it, so he was kind of held on to the side. Um, wasn't any damage to him or anything like that. It wasn't the power head, I think, that caused it, um, because he wasn't anywhere near the, the blades of the, the power head. Um, but I'll show you a little video there if it's just me the, the morning after. So I'll show you that just now, and uh, we'll come back. So, guys, the, the other fish that I got was a Hector's Gobi. Now... This is a 20 gallon tank and sort of a big part of the way I'm trying to stock this tank is using sort of 10 gallon plus suitable fish so that you know the tank's more than big enough for their needs. Um, and unfortunately this morning after a week I've come in to find my Hector's Gobi um, on the side of the, the power head. Um, I'll go around just to let you see, not that's really something that I want to be showing. Um, so it's, it's really really not good news, I mean I'd, I'd looked about for these i was looking for a goby that would suit most of the other gobies that you would find that will, will sift sand um are kind of 30 gallon plus now you know this is 20 uk gallons which i keep referring to but it's probably closer to 25 us gallons so i could probably get away with one of the bigger gobies to be honest um but you know i ordered this trying just trying to keep on the side of, of caution and have more than big enough a tank for for all my fish um I don't, I don't know what's happened here. I've, I've had him a week. Um, I did a water change last night. Um, so the light was on a bit later than, than usual, a couple of hours, because I, I did some things after work and then cracked on with, with doing the water change later on and, you know, vacuumed all the, the sand bed and um, done that. So it was fine. He was kind of sitting in the bottom at the front. I don't know if 
maybe it was it could have been temperature shot although the the water was pretty much up to temperature it only dropped by a degree by the time i put it in the tank because it was at room temperature and it's the middle of summer um the only other thing is that i came in last night to grab something out of the room because it's my home office um and he was or i'm sure it was him was was kicking about at the front of the tank in the foreground there i'm pretty sure he hides under that rock at the back there's a little sort of overhang um, and a fish when I put the the room light on some sort of fish certainly darted from the front to the the back there and it would only have been either the Hector's goby or my other fish that I've got that's quite new which I'll, I'll show you in a minute um, so I don't know what's happened there it's maybe the water change is upsetting there's something's going on there um, there's the potential of the damsel but he's probably more afraid of things than anything else I mean you know he gets the slightest fright and he'll be straight in that cave he doesn't bother the the blenny wherever he's gone um he doesn't bother the clownfish and to be honest all four of those fish will be out at the same time i've seen them within a you know all in a quite a tight group a few times with the, the two clowns the damsel and the, the blennies all in a, a tight little ball um you know passing each other or just ambling about you know looking at what's going on you know they're never they've never been aggressive to each other and the damsel's also never been aggressive to the the ras, um, who is a much smaller, much more timid fish than he is. Um, so I, I don't think it's them. Um, so really, really gutted about the Hector's goby. Uh, you know, it was something I got ordered in specially, and I was looking for a little small sand sifter just to suit my tank. Um, so I'll maybe just need to wait and uh, maybe just leave it alone. I might get a, another goby in, in the future, but. At the moment, I'm just going to have to leave it alone and I'll just have to keep on top of the sand. But I've got Nasaria snails, I've got conches as well, so not too worried about that. But it's just a bit cutting that, you know, I've only had it a week, so something wasn't right there. Um, and it was a fish that only, I don't have any footage of the fish either because I only really seen it once or twice a day if I was lucky. Um, it's a very, very timid fish and it hides in little lots of nooks and crannies. It's not a, an outgoing fish as it was. Um, but it, you know, it certainly was alive last night, and uh, but unfortunately this morning I've, I've come in to find it like this. So really, really disappointed on that one. But we'll come back. I've got some other things to go over as well. What I've also got today, guys, um, after the water change last night, the the snails actually laid probably in the night a whole load of eggs. Now I've seen this a couple of times before in the tank, um, although maybe been in awkward places where it's been quite hard to see, or the next day they've been gone. So. To be fair, the little ras there hasn't had a go at them. Um, probably some of the other snails might do, possibly the conches, um, or I, I don't know, something. something's eating them anyway. Um, whether they'll come to anything, I, I doubt it, but we'll see. Maybe if they lay in a better place next time, if somewhere out the way, they might might hatch in future, but um, it's quite cool. I'm guessing it's the little, zoom back out, uh, the ser the snails, because there's about 10 of those, or it could potentially be the, the two conches are maybe laying the eggs or it could be the, the Nasaria snails and um, what I did also just see as well my little stomatella snail so that was a little hitchhiker so he's just basically it's almost like a slug with a a, a little cap on the top and um, so it's not a full-on shell shell as such you know, it's not going to give him a huge amount of protection but he's been going about the tank for a good few months now and um, I see him on the back qu glass quite a lot you go over the sand bed on occasion just to get to another bit of rock but um, He's pretty cool, he just does his thing and, and moseys about, but he's pretty happy. But um, So that's the other one, so I've got the snail eggs there, so I'm pretty happy with those. It's nice to know that the snails are pretty happy and they're, they're, you know, the conditions are good enough for them to breed, which isn't particularly hard, but you know, at least it's a good indication that, that things are healthy in the tank, in, in terms of the, the snails anyway at least. Um, and there's a the little wrasse as well, so he's quite shy, but he, he does come out now and again. Um, but yeah, that's the, the snail eggs there, we'll come back. So guys, here we are in the tank just now. Now I'll see the mushrooms looking so much better. Now when I came back a few days ago, um, you could kind of see the guts of this one um, sticking out the middle. It wasn't too happy, but now I've got the feeding back on it. It's not too bad. And the, I'll show, this, yeah, sort of show you there, the sort of cyano, it's kind of like the, almost like cobwebs. Um, it's not looking too happy. And you know, you can see the sand bed pretty. I mean, this was vacuumed uh, a couple of nights ago. Um, so it's it's something we need to work on the nutrients and it'll, it'll go over time um, Now it's just disappeared um, I'm not going to see it. I also have a, a banded a yellow banded possum wrasse, which is doing great He's 
quite shy. There he is there. Oh, if you can see it. So I'll pop that in there. I've actually got a bit of video from when I first got it. So I'll pop that into this video just now. But he's uh, he likes to eat sort of little pests and things. He, he basically hangs up the back of the rock work and uh, eats little bits and pieces. And that's the damsel there who, if anyone was going to bully him, it would be the damsel. And now, you know, the possum rasp was added after the uh, the damsel that I've got there. And damsel seems to have found a, a different hiding place from normal. Um, so that's the possum rasp there. Great little fish. It was not something I thought I'd find in the UK very easily. And I just happened to go into my local LFS, which is Nessie's Lair, and uh, he had quite a few of these. So I got one reserved and uh, really, really happy with that. It's a great little fish, so really happy with that one. Just going over the tank then. So as you can see, the rock part's not terrible. There's um, coralline algae seems to be growing through, but I'm just getting these sort of wisps of um, what I would say is uh, bits of... Some of this is just algae in itself, but... There does look to be bits of sand, and it's mostly on the, the sort of sand bed and things, so it's not looking great just now. But I'll need to, it does look actually worse on the camera, it's not quite as bad as that. Um, obviously, there is a dark patch there, but it's not, um, it's much lighter in, in real life on the, the bottom there, it's not quite as bad. But you can see there, it's, it's not in a good place, so um, it's something that we'll work on. And as you can see there, the red grape algae has lost pretty much all its grapes because it was in this uh, the little frag tank. Now, I've just got that set up, it needs a bit of a clean. However, um, the copepods are loving it. There's hundreds of them on there. They're actually, you can actually see where they're eating the algae. There's actually little gaps where, now I just threw some, a couple of bits of rock. So I, I put the bits of rock that the, my macro algae are on into there and some bits of floss. And I've just used that to cycle it. I haven't really done any testing because there's not any fish going on at any time soon. I don't need to do that. Peppermint shrimp's there, is quite happy. He's doing away. Um, hopefully he's eating any aptasia if there's any in the tank and the, the damsels is uh, nervous as always, but he's, he's he comes out and he swims about and he has a good uh, good feed with the clowns and the, the tail spot plenty. They're probably my three most outgoing fish is the clowns and the tail spot. Wherever the tail spot has decided to hide at the moment, and there's one of my snails just having a, a climb about. Um, but yeah, all looking pretty good. Everything's healthy, unfortunately, apart from the the Hector's goby which I've lost, um, and all my zoas are actually growing. I've got some uh, new polyps on the zoas. You see the bit of cyano and the uh, redactus mushroom there. I've also got a new bit of GSP, which while just sitting on this rack has actually decided to spread in that a little bit. I've had to move it every now and again, so it's it's not uh, sticking to there. So looking good that way. Um, it's something we'll come back. I've got loads going on with the, the tank. Excuse the glare there, I'll come away. Um, but yeah, a few things to deal with there. I'll just need to keep on top of maintenance and um, not be dosing vibrant until I've got my nutrients in check. I will probably be adding another couple of fish just to get the nutrients built up, built up because uh, that seems to be causing a lot of my problems. It's just a, a lack of nutrients. And I'll just come back a second. I'll let you see. So that's the, let adjust there. That's the fleas and black box light and it's on the, the rack there. I'll even come back a bit further. Um, so it sits quite high, you know, there's potential. I could potentially cut down those uh, the steel tubes either side if I wanted it to be, um, you know, hang the light higher on the rack but have the, the rack a little bit shorter but maybe look a bit neater and the, the ato is doing great as well that lasts a good four days so i might be using that to dose some uh all for reef sometime soon um but yeah i hope you enjoyed the video guys it's a bit of a, an overdue update um just to let you see where the tanks are and uh, we'll get back to to regular updates every week and we'll we'll keep on top of things but thanks for watching guys give me a little like and subscribe and i'll catch you all next time